Hello. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Pastor Delphine. Um, and uh, once more, welcome everybody. And as has been our custom, please feel free to ask questions, feel free to contribute in our discussions. And if there is anything that you do not understand, please ask for clarity. If you'd like me to repeat, you're most welcome. And uh, you're all invited to contribute. Don't feel shy. Don't be afraid. We are all here to fellowship together and learn from one another. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Uh, we, I like to start off with um, asking you guys for your objectives. What are your objectives today? What would you like to learn? What do you hope to learn today? And then after that, we go into a recap of what we discussed last time. All right? And then uh, we also... Uh, then you also get opportunity to ask questions, questions that um, you have encountered during this period of time uh, when we have not been meeting, or whichever questions that have uh, been on your mind for whatever period of time. Is that clear for everybody? So we begin with uh, our expectations. Uh, Anybody, is there anybody who would like to share their expectations for today? Is there any particular um, point you'd like us to handle today? Amen. What are your expectations for today? What would you like to learn today? Amen. Uh, well, I would like to. I would like you to handle the uh, the issue of age in marriage. Okay. Uh -huh. That's a very good one. All right. The issue of age in marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Age and maturity level. Yeah. Uh -huh. Those are very okay. So those are two topics, yeah. I mean, those are two, two, two. Yes, two topics essentially, yeah. Number one, okay, two in one. Um, age and then maturity. Okay. Thank you so much, Sister Eunice. Asante Sana. How do you say thank you for the question? In Swahili. Age. In marriage. Expectations. I, uh, the issue of uh, maturity. Maturity. In marriage. All right. In marriage or in preparing for marriage? Okay, anybody else? Anybody else with the with an expectation? Hallelujah. Anything? There's nothing that is too unimportant to discuss. Pastor Jacob, you have a question? You have an expectation to share? Mm. Yeah. Brother Joy? Uh, let me think about it. All right. Yeah. You may think about it. Pastor Joy, are you there? I hope you can hear me, Pastor Joy, in South Africa. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, anybody, anybody who would like to, sh to share their expectations, feel free. 
Okay, so these are two expectations we have so far from Sister Eunice. We will definitely handle them. Uh, before we go to these uh, expectations, before we handle them, let us do a little bit of recap from our last meeting. Uh, do we remember the topic we discussed last time? Broken. Uh -huh. Yes. What is that? What is that, Pastor Jacob? Was here? Uh, no? Spiritual brokenness. Yes, we discussed spiritual brokenness. Yeah. Uh huh. Would you like to tell us something from on spiritual brokenness? What do you remember from our last meeting? Sister Eunice also listened. What do you remember, Sister Eunice? Oh, okay, Pastor Delphine was not here. Who was here? Who was here with us? Was here, Jacob? Were you uh, uh, last time? I was there, but I think I was also waiting. <laughs> My concentration was not so much. That was very much possible. Uh, Brother Kevin, were you there? Were you here last time when we were discussing spiritual brokenness? Would you like to share with us? Help us recap. Hallelujah. IT. Somebody wants to chip in, eh? Sister, where is Sister Meke? Is she still here? Uh -huh. Would you like to chip in from what we discussed last time? The voice is a bit lower, though. Okay, try again. Okay, try again. I'm saying we we have spoken about spiritual brokenness. Yes. And we have discussed a lot of things like when we are talking about spiritual brokenness, we 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 include humility, forgiveness, and so many things. That, Senior Bishop, I can't really remember. It had been a while. I did not even recap on the. Uh huh. It had been uh -huh. a while. Okay, but you mentioned something there. You mentioned um, humility. What else was that you mentioned? What else was that you mentioned? I think we've spoken about being remorseful and being. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, being remorseful. Forgiveness. Mm -hmm. All right. right. I, I welcome uh, I welcome uh, over Saki. Of Saki. You are most welcome. Welcome. We are doing a quick a quick, quick recap. Quick recap on what we discussed last what time. I hope you can hear me, Pastor. Hear me. Amen, amen. amen. Thank you very amen. much, uh, you very much uh, 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 Senior uh, Bishop. Senior Bishop, it is, yes. it is a blessing to be here once again. Thank you so much, and I'm, I thank God so much for the recap. I found you in time for the recap of the last meeting since I wasn't uh, um, available that time. Uh -huh. Oh, and blessings and blessings and greetings to everybody. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. Uh, did you did you manage to listen to the the last time's teaching, last last time's um, session? Yes, I listened in a bit. Uh, 
senior bishop. And uh, hopefully I can uh, finalize and get more recap, visual recap on, 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 uh, on the last meeting. Uh -huh. um, yes, Eunice, I was saying, um, uh, I was saying that uh, you gave us the two expectations that we will handle today. Uh, and I was also saying that, did you manage to listen to last, our last session, the recording? Did you manage to listen? And would you like to? Oh, yes, please. Yep. Yes, please, Senior Bishop, I did. I actually managed and I had the, the old beat. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes, please. Would you, help, <laughs> would you like to help us recap? Um, to recap from last time. Yes. A bit of recap from what you remember. Um, owing to their uh, spiritual brokenness. Yes, on matters of spiritual brokenness. Uh, I don't know, but okay. Uh, I think the three that have just been mentioned are uh, mm -hmm. just enough because everything else maybe will just be a repetition. It's always good to repeat. Nothing is lost in the repeating. <laughs> Uh, repentance. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. And uh, what 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 was said about the importance of spiritual brokenness? <clears throat> why was it? Why is it important that we consider this topic of uh, spiritual brokenness? Where does it fit in? the grand scheme of uh, matters of marriage, matters marriage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Am I asking difficult questions? Um, uh, just give us a moment to think. <laughs> okay, please think, 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 think. Uh, Monica wrote, uh, she said, did we discuss building on the right foundation? Actually, we were going to discuss uh, next, uh, building on the right foundation. And we didn't discuss it last time. Yes. Building on the right foundation was supposed to be the next topic. It, okay. Just to begin with, uh, spiritual brokenness uh, helps to avoid conflicts in marriage. Mm -hmm. Sorry, can you repeat that? Can you please repeat that? Um, it, yeah, it helps uh, to avoid conflicts, unnecessary conflicts, that mm -hmm. is. Okay. Please continue. If you are stuck, if you are stuck, Day Adeline will help you. Welcome, Day. Who else joined us recently? Um, Yes, anybody, even if you're not here, just chip in. Why, why do you think it's, it is an, it's such an important topic, spiritual brokenness, even if you're not here last time? Amen. I think we discussed that the, the spiritual brokenness is the condition that attracts the attention of God, mm -hmm. and it gives us the... It gives us more understanding of ourselves and okay. and to understand God more. Yes. And 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 uh, that's that's right. Helps us understand ourselves very much. What is very that much. nature is of that self, self that uh, is especially crucial in this respect? How? Uh, what? What uh, part of self? What, what sort of self? What self? Does spiritual brokenness help us understand? And how does it help us in that? Uh -huh. 
All right. So, so spiritual brokenness. Uh, spiritual brokenness uh, helps us realize that, helps us to humble ourselves because being sinful as we are, you know, as we are in the ministry of repentance and holiness, we know very well that the flesh is very weak. The flesh is very wicked. And, uh, and oftentimes we have very selfish ambition when we get into uh, marriage. Sometimes we have un unholy desires as we get into the area of marriage. And, and, and even more, especially very important is the, is the aspect of pride that uh, both of us, male and female, when men and women, when we get into marriage, there's usually an element of pride that becomes a huge stumbling block for both of us. Uh, becomes a very, very huge stumbling block. And without spiritual brokenness, that pride really be, ruins a lot of things, ruins everything. Uh, and uh, when we talk about the matters of uh, conflict, was it Sister Meke who, who uh, talked about conflict, or was it Sister Eunice who talked about conflict? You realize that uh, a lot of the conflicts that we have in marriage, indeed, some, uh, not, a, a number of them come from, the, from a place of uh, from pride. Yeah? And spiritual brokenness allows us to truly be humble when we enter into marriage, to not overestimate ourselves, to not um, to not consider ourselves to be more as more important than we really are. One, two. Uh, as I said, we 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 sometimes enter marriage with the wrong motives. We enter marriage with wrong expectations. Uh, we gave the example of, uh, uh, of 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 a man getting into marriage, or a man approaching a woman to ask for her hand in marriage. And he feels like he's entitled to, to get a yes, whether the woman wants or not. Yeah? He feels like he can never get a no. And he will never take no for an answer. And so the, that's, that's quite a lot of pride. And such a, such a heart, such a person entering into a relationship thinking that uh, she, she can never say no to me, she must never say no to me, uh, it's... It's, it's really has has really got everything wrong. Has really got everything wrong, and thinks and feels like you are entitled. Such a person feels like they are entitled uh, to to having a relationship with somebody, yeah? to having a relationship yeah, yeah. with someone's daughter, um, whom probably they don't know much about, and so. Spiritual brokenness allows us to, to dismantle all that, all the mountains of pride in our hearts. In a bishop, the, the men really feel like, they feel like uh, they really deserve the years and, uh, yeah. Yes, a lot of brothers, yeah. definitely brothers feel like they own somebody. <laughs> they feel like they're entitled. They, 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 they feel like they, they own you. If, if, if they want to marry you, then they feel like, I'm not, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure it's all of them, but some of them, yeah, they feel like you just have to say yes, whether you want or not. And that is the wrong, <laughs> that is the wrong attitude to approach uh, a relationship. Yeah. Or even to approach, uh, to, to get into marriage, wanting a woman who will cook for you. And therefore you feel like I'm entitled to a woman who must cook for me. I'm entitled to a woman who must take care of me. And so Rather than entering into marriage with the mindset of serving, to be the one serving and to be the one to, to love, to give, to enter marriage with the, with the mindset of giving and loving yeah, as Christ gave and loved us, the person enters mar marriage with the mindset of just taking, taking, receiving, receiving. And that is, that, that, that is not compatible to, with, uh, with success in marriage. Yeah? It's not compatible at all. And I'm sure a lot of sisters here have, have their own experiences eh? <laughs> with, uh, with brothers who have such mindsets, um, either over there in the world or 
or even in the church before we met, we came to this gospel. But you even find, even in, our, in, in, in some of our congregations, uh, there are brothers with such mindsets, which is very wrong. And so spiritual brokenness really destroys that mountain of pride. And there are so many mountains of pride in our hearts that must or, be. Uh, Bishop, um, a, a brother could just be like, you know, you could just be, you may just be close to him. You are just friends. And so he has that mentality that if he proposes to you, then you'll just have, you'll automatically just give him a yes. That's it. That's it. So he feels like being close to you gives, uh, gives him a, 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 what? Green ticket. <laughs> That's it. And, 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 and also you see, and I, and I said, and we said last time that when you are preparing for marriage, when you are preparing, <clears throat> when you are preparing to enter into a relationship with, with, uh, with, with, with your future uh, spouse or with somebody that you're trusting God for, you need to tremble before the Lord. Yeah? You really need to tremble because this is somebody's daughter. This is God's daughter. This is God's son that you're about to get into a relationship with. And being as sinful as you are, uh, you need to really, really, really tremble before the Lord and ask the Lord to help you because you can easily mess up. If there is one thing that we are good at is messing up, is breaking people's hearts, is ruining people's lives. We are really good at that. And so, uh, and, and, and so you need to realize that the Lord must really break you so that your will becomes his will. Amen. So that our will truly becomes the will of the Lord. Spiritual brokenness is the process of allowing God's transformation. That's it. Allowing God to mold you. Take away your will and put his will there. And give you his goals. And give you his purpose. And make, and, and make you to pursue uh, the fear of the Lord. The will of the Lord. Rather than pursuing your own selfish desires. I learned from the last conversation that for us to grow, we need to be broken and God can work on our hearts when we are broken. That's it. A man or woman who does not have a broken heart does not learn much. Very, it's very stubborn. Only a humble heart can be molded. Only a broken heart can be easily molded into the shape, into the image that the Lord desires to mold us into. Uh, because we know that marriage only has one goal, the image of God, the glory of God, the holiness of God. And so marriage does not exist for us. Marriage exists for the Lord. And so for us to realize that true goal and true purpose for marriage, we have to get rid of ourselves. We have to die to self. We have to die to our selfish ambitions. Our selfish ambitions of having big cars, our selfish ambitions of having many children, our selfish ambitions of having, um, of, of acquiring riches by getting married to a such and such person, our selfish ambitions of, for, for the brothers, of wanting the most beautiful woman ever. <laughs> selfish ambitions of being the one to, 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 to marry this person rather than somebody else marrying that person. You know, so we have to die to self. And spiritual brokenness is that, is that vehicle. Is that vehicle. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. Does anybody want to add to that? I want to ask questions with respect to that. Okay, Sister Susan says, I learned that you cannot walk away from your partner before the issue is settled. Uh-huh. Indeed. Uh, you know, when when uh, when you get into marriage, you realize that there will be quite a lot of clashing, a lot of conflict, yeah. And when there is no spiritual brokenness, you can easily do a lot of damage uh, in your conflict. It takes a process, it's a process to learn to sell to solve conflict. Uh, in a way that is a win-win for both of for both you and your spouse, and and spiritual brokenness becomes a great tool that the Lord will use 
to help you uh, to learn to listen to your spouse, to learn to submit to your spouse, to learn to, um, to give up your desire to be heard and rather listen to the other person. Most people never realize that brokenness is actually a gift from God, Sister Maker says, that demonstrate how awesome and un, uh, his awesome and unyield, unyielding love. That's it. No salvation without spiritual brokenness. And, and, and in the same line, no marital success without spiritual brokenness. Because when, when uh, without spiritual brokenness, we often try to fight for fight for your right. Yeah? When you get into marriage, you feel like I must fight for myself. I must defend myself from this person, from this man or from this woman. I must show how this man is wrong. But spiritual brokenness allows you to look at yourself, to remove the, the plank that is in your eye first. And we all enter marriage with a lot of baggage, lots of baggage and lots of planks in our eyes that must be removed. But they can only be removed through spiritual brokenness. Hallelujah. Only spiritual brokenness can allow us to, to see that eye, that big eye, that big eye, but that big um, plank in our eye before we try to deal with the smoke, with the moat in our spouse's eyes. All right. Thank you so much for your contributions. Um, now, on matters of um, age in preparing for marriage. Uh, so, so, Eunice, you asked uh, your question on age. Yeah. You want to know wh whether there is, what, what is the, the, the right age to get married? Or you want to know the, the issue of age difference, how big the age difference should be? Or Yeah, yeah, sure, how the difference. All right, age difference. Um, yeah. This is, this is one question that, um, that kept me on my toes before we got married, to understand really what does the Bible say about age difference, yeah? If we go to the book of uh, Genesis, uh, I once, uh, one, uh, one um, uh, auntie from church told me that, if you go to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, is that chapter 1? The creation of Adam and Eve, verse 26 and verse 27. That um, I would like to read for us Genesis chapter 1. Would like to read for us, or shall I read for myself? Genesis, I'll read. okay. In fact, Genesis chapter 2. Let's go to Genesis. Two. I can read the uh, mm -hmm. okay. So, Sister Eunice and uh, uh, Vasiasaki, they want to read for us, yeah. Okay, Genesis chapter 2. Verse 21 to verse 25. Can you read that? Uh, is it Genesis chapter 2 from verse? Verse 21. Okay. Uh, the NIV version I have here uh, uh, from verse 21 to? 25. Okay. Uh, I'll just read my version, then I'll let over here also read. Okay. Yeah, from his version. Okay, mine says, uh, so the Lord God caused the man to fall into deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Verse 22, then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man. Uh, to the man. 23, the man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. She was taken out of man, uh, 24. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh, 25. 
Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Amen. Thank you so much. How many of us have been troubled by this question? What is the right age difference? How many of us have been troubled by this question? Is it only Sister Eunice? <laughs> Maybe I have got my own reasons. So <laughs> <laughs> that is why I raised it. <laughs> and I have also been troubled by this question. Who else was troubled? Okay, Dea Adeline. Yes, Dea Adeline says she was also troubled by this question. Uh -huh. I too was Our, troubled. Yes, Sister Susan also uh, has been troubled by this question. Yes, and it's a legit legitimate question indeed. Um, both both ways, yeah. How 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 big should the age difference be? Who who should be older, the men or the women, right? Uh, all such questions. <laughs> if the man is older, uh, sh should he be should he be a peer one one year older? Should he, should he be five years older? Okay. If the woman should be older, or I mean, if the woman can be older. How much older can she be? Yes, all such uh, details of, uh, of this question. Now, the first answer somebody gave me to this question, uh, they referenced to this scripture and they said, because Adam was created first, because man was created first than woman, therefore, the man must be older than the woman. What do you guys think? about that answer. Because Adam was created first, <laughs> then Eve, and Eve was taken out of Adam, meaning Adam was, uh, was alive on earth for some days before Eve was created. Therefore, the man must be older. And it is not biblical. In fact, the answer was, it is not biblical for the man to be younger than the woman. What do you guys think? Uh, the man being older, uh, it's not, you know, the Bible is law, and that is not from the Bible, right? Sorry? Uh, the Bible is law, yeah, and uh, that is not from the Bible. Am I right? Okay, so you think it is not biblical that the man must necessarily be older? Right? Okay, I don't think if it's a necess if, if it's a really, really biblical, because I I don't really think anyway, uh, mm -hmm. if, unless if, it, if the Bible really, uh, if it's in the Bible, then um, then it has to be followed because the Bible is slow and <laughs> you can't go against that. Uh -huh. Susan says exactly the men should be older. Susan agrees the men must be older. Okay, what does... Uh... Sister Delphine says, Sister Delphine, you may speak. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then regarding that issue, who is to be older? Yes. Okay, even though I'm a youth, but I can say something to it. Uh -huh. I think from the statement, uh, from the scripture I've read, yes. it's not about the issue of who is older and who is younger. Uh -huh. When it comes to marriage, it's a matter of understanding each other. Mm -hmm. It's not yes. who is older and who is younger. Mm -hmm. Because marriage, we are being called, we are not going to marriage because of we want to bear children, we want no. Yes. We get to marriage, the sole purpose of it to help each other to enter eternity. Yes. And that is the I think the basic foundation. It's all about Christ. If that is where you will center your marriage, then the issues about age and whatever does not factor in. Mm -hmm. Because you are being called to live in one unity of faith. It's mm -hmm. a matter of understanding. He might be younger. It might, he might be older. Mm -hmm. But what is important? Are you understanding each other? Mm -hmm. Are you in good relationship with each other? Are you exalting Christ in that marriage? Mm -hmm. Those are the things we need to look about. But the issue of age, I think it does not factor in. Because when Adam, Eve was pulled from Adam, 
you'll find even the sole purpose, it was not about uh, marriage, but this you can see it came yes. after after the after the naming mm -hmm. of the creatures. The Lord so Adam found out there are two too, but he has no helper. Mm -hmm. Then that's why you hear when the Adam he was pulled out of Adam. Yes. Adam himself was a spirit mm -hmm. created from the spirit, but when Eve was pulled out of Adam. Mm -hmm. Then you hear the Lord start talking of flesh. Mm -hmm. And Adam, you see, he said he exalts now flesh. Mm -hmm. So you find it was not even the issues about marriage, mm -hmm. but also despite the fact we say they married each other, that in that context he put in the context of marriage. Mm -hmm. But to me, I understand marriage, it comes with the understanding. It's not about who is older and who is younger. Mm -hmm. As long as you understand each other, you are, you are good to go. Mm -hmm. Of course, you cannot go. Maybe you are 30 or, or 60, and then you go to the someone who is 30. Yes. That one, no. Mm -hmm. The lady can be down with two edge, the self between the ages, it may be two or three, but not that long. But still, anyone, even the lady can be older than you. Mm -hmm. It is the Lord who provides for you. It is not you who provide for yourself. Mm -hmm. So you can go even for that younger and you find you have married a demon. You can go for older and you find you have married a demon. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of understanding each other. Age does not matter there. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. That's a very powerful contribution. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor uh, Delphine. Sister Meke, what were you saying? That, thank you so much for that insightful contribution. Uh, Sister Meke had raised her hand up. Amen. According to the scripture that we have just read, I, I don't think it's, a, it's a biblical that a man should be younger, men should be older or how, but by look at it, uh, mm -hmm. yes, yep. man, at least a man must be older than the lady. Since uh, we, we, we ladies mature earlier than men, so nobody will want to be married by uh, a younger, younger man. <laughs> so you bring up the issue of maturity. Issue of maturity. So, you are saying, yes. so you are saying the man must be older, older so that he'll be more mature yeah, or so that mature, he'll be equally so mature? Be equally mature. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Yes, yes, that's what that's what I mean, Senior Bishop. Okay. Because I, by looking by looking at it, nobody would would want to be married by a younger man who is uh -huh. immature than you are matured. Okay. So you're saying women mature faster women than mature men, faster than therefore, men. therefore, uh, uh, a man must be older. Must be older. Yes, the woman, so they that's uh, just that's my opinion. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. That is your opinion. Okay, uh, uh somebody raised their hand there of a Siasaki. Uh, Kelvin is saying, since there is no specific command from the Bible about age difference, then one needs to marry one who is compatible and suitable for him or her. Mm -hmm. Maybe from the biological point of view. All right. Thank you. And that's uh, Bishop. Um, yes. Uh, in the aspect of uh, the man being older uh, than the woman. Okay, you know, uh, uh, in that, I think, uh, according to me, uh, in that aspect, when the man is older, uh, it, he should be uh, at least like, you know, more than five, like uh, from five years and above. Uh, this is because uh, when uh, uh, when it goes below five, when it's below five, then you know 
that respect, you know, uh, the woman really, it happens most of, most of the time, you, you, she won't really accord you that respect that you deserve as the husband. You, because, think, you think the men should be older? And it should yeah, be but, five years older? Yeah, and above, <laughs> like 10, 15, okay. 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, uh, mm -hmm. because when you find a man who is like uh, maybe let's say 30 and the woman is 28 in that marriage you know you will really respect will really be a, a something that is lacking okay uh, in most cases in that marriage or if it's just three you know because the woman like will be saying how or like why should i do this to my husband now and uh, we are, we are just of the same age. Uh, I overheard another lady saying mm. uh, the husband uh, like doesn't like her going to uh, people's houses. So uh, when the husband called her uh, to go to to go back to the house, she said, "Why should I? He's just a kid, you know, <laughs> because they're just a, <laughs> he's just a child." I think the man is thirty and the husband is thirty-two, so you know, there's not there's not that respect. So the man should be like you know five and above years. Okay. That's according to me. All right, uh, Ovasiasaki, what do you say? Yes, thank you very much, uh, uh, blessed senior bishop. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's very powerful in here. I agree with the sisters. Mm -hmm. how they are contributing very powerful there some of these things i'm um, also learning and uh, getting to understand how how uh, at least um, uh, the other gender feels or, or, or their opinions and two cents regarding this yes. so i really appreciate this and uh, yes judging from or looking from the scripture mm -hmm. uh, as it says that and two shall become one mm -hmm. you know so when two becomes one, one flesh, so then I see that the, 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 there is no age there, you mm -hmm. know, because you, you two are basically now one. So you, you regard yourself as one age or as one, one, one person or other. Mm -hmm. But however, from my, from my personal opinion, mm -hmm. uh, I, I feel, I feel it's, 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 it's from, at least from my side, I feel it's better I get married to, to a lady that is seven years younger than me. You know, I, I believe a man should at least be, 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 be older. That is now from my personal opinion. But however, um, age, on the other hand, doesn't really, uh, there's a thin line between age and, uh, and, and, and maturity. Because sometimes age doesn't really define maturity. I can be, um, one can be 27, and yet be more matured than a man that is 35 years old. Mm -hmm. um, based on what I've seen and uh, experiences that I've been uh, observing and, 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 and also know. So I think both sides are correct. Um, both sides are correct. But from my personal opinion, I feel a man should be older. Okay. That is my humble contribution. All right. Uh, you think a man must be older? All right, uh, let's, uh, we'll get to uh, Pastor Delphine. Let me give to Sister Epifania. Sister Epifania, can you hear? Yes, please, Sonia Bishop, I can hear. Yes. Uh, from, my own, from my own point of view and from reading the scriptures, mm -hmm. I think that a man should be older than a woman. Okay. Since uh, it's the Bible says that in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, from verse 8 and 9, there it says that a woman comes from a man, but not a man comes, the, the man did not come from a woman, but is the woman who comes from the man. Meaning that uh, 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 regarding it, that the man is now the head of the house, is the head because he was the one a, a woman was created from. Meaning that he was created for some days, for the and then the woman later on, was now taken from his uh, rim, uh, causing it for the man to be the head of the house. Then, if the if the woman was to be to be bigger than a man, then could do, now now let us just uh, refer it uh, that the woman. I mean, the man is the, is now the one who was made from the 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 woman, not the woman who was made from the man any longer. Since it says mm -hmm. that the man is the head of the house, it is the head that was created first. 
-hmm. That's just my point of view that a man is supposed to be bigger than a woman. Okay. Uh, so you're saying because the man is the head and he's the one out of whom came the woman, therefore he must be older. All right. And, uh, and our question is, uh, is it, uh, what, does, what does the Bible say? Uh, should the man be older? Should the man be, uh, uh, should the woman be older? Uh, or, and uh, we read from uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 to 25, uh, from where somebody told me that um, the woman must be younger than the man because it is not biblical for the man to be younger than the woman, uh, owing to the fact that he was created first. And Sister Epiphania says, yes, the woman must be younger than the man because the man is the head and he's the source. Okay. Let us hear from uh, Pastor, Ad, uh, Pastor Delphine. And then we go to Naomi. Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessed Amen. Bishop. Mm -hmm. Amen. I've heard the points from Sister Eunice and Brother, I forgot the name, and Sister Epiphania, if I'm that right. Epiphania. I want to say like this, mm -hmm. according to their point, I've heard, okay, with the brother he said, that is his opinion, but she lined up that the age does not factor, which is much okay. Mm -hmm. But the reality when you look to biblically, as much as men, men was created first, mm -hmm. and the woman was pulled out of the rib, the Bible say, when these two people come together, they become one flesh. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the matter of respect, mm -hmm. yes, ladies, we are supposed to respect our husband. And the husband is supposed to respect the lady. It is a vice versa. Mm -hmm. It was not for one side. Mm -hmm. As much as the woman, uh, the husband is the head. Now you look in this context of Christ. Christ is the head of the church. Christ is the husband of the church, and the church is the bride. Mm -hmm. So you have to respect Christ. Mm -hmm. yes. When it comes to, we say maturity, maturity is not mold with the age. Mm -hmm. Maturity is mold by the character mm -hmm. and how well you are rooted in Christ. Is the Christ, the way you are mature in Christ, the way you are mold in Christ, it is Christ's behavior, Christ's character that will mold you to be in that state of maturity. That's why I remember when the mightiest prophet of the Lord was giving us the 89 qualities mm -hmm. of a good Christ, Christian living. Mm -hmm. And he talks about teachability. Yes. When you look in the context of teachability, you will find this person, he, he might, she might be a Sunday school child mm -hmm. and you are a pastor. Yes. Then you'll find this Sunday school child telling, rebuking you and giving you meaningful things that you, even as a pastor, you never thought of it. And he's a Sunday school child. And he rebukes you. Yes. You have to take it. Mm -hmm. You'll find this Sunday school child has mature more than even what you thought. Mm -hmm. So maturity is not coming up with the age. Respect does not come up with age. It comes up with character. So for you, for me, those who are prepared for marriage or to get into it or preparing for it, mold your character. Don't mold the age or don't wait for the person who is your age. Whether he's old or young, let the character speak for you. Let the character be the soul or the direction of your house. Let, do not allow the age to rule the house, but the character. That is what we call maturity. Maturity is not age. Mm -hmm. When Adam was the first one to be created, it didn't mean that all the ladies, they have to be young. No. Mm -hmm. Respect is from both sides. And that's what is build, build a healthy marriage. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Blessed Bishop. And you're most welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, and you're saying that uh, maturity and age are two different things. Maturity is not determined by age, and that uh, it is rather determined by character and Christ-likeness. 
Thank you so much for your contribution. Let me welcome uh, Pastor. Let me welcome Pastor. Somebody with a Note Seven. Let me welcome Innocencia. Somebody with Galaxy A11. Also, Pastor Catherine from Ireland. Welcome. Welcome, please. Uh, thank you for joining us. You found we are discussing the issue of age difference in marriage. And um, there was a, a comment here by Dea Adeline. She says she believes that age does not really matter from her point of view because you can find a younger man who is matured, responsible and understanding, and you can find an older man who is not matured and foolish. Uh -huh. Thank you, Sister Day. Okay, Naomi, what did you want to add? Praise the Lord. Amen, praise the Lord. Welcome. So I once sat somewhere where I was told that marriage is about spirituality. It's not about anything physical. Mm -hmm. So when one wants to enter into marriage, you just need to think about the physical. Physical aspects. That means the most important thing that you have to think about is mostly spiritual. And also, there's a scripture that says that two do not walk together unless they agree. Mm -hmm. So there's also that part of just agreement. So it doesn't matter that maybe the man is older or the woman is older. Mm -hmm. Just uh, that agreement and understanding, I think that is what um, will bring about the success in marriage. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. They're saying what determines success in marriage is uh, the spiritual aspect and not necessarily the physical aspect, right? Uh, thank you so much, Naomi, for your contribution. Um, you're great. Uh, before before I give my point on here, um, let me hear your point, your your, your answer to this. I heard another person say. Age is just a number. What do you guys think? Is age just a number? So we are saying um, age does not matter. And then, I mean, we are saying age matters. And then we are saying uh, age should not, does not determine uh, spiritual maturity. Uh, and that um, uh, and maturity, maturity can be, uh, is determined by character. And so the question then comes, what about age? Is it just a number? Pastor Delphine, do you want to add to, to, to weigh in on this? Is age just a number? Yeah, sure, age is just a number. Okay. And he said, yes, age is just a number. Would you like to add more to that? Would you like to add there, end there? Is age just a number? All right, uh, Sister Delphine, is your hand up? No, please, Bishop, but I can say, yes, it's true. Age is just a number, mm -hmm. but all that matters, it's Christ in your marriage because it is he, the, it is he Christ, who will mold that marriage, but not your age. So age is just a number. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your Amen. Amen. Yes. Where is the Lord? Who's that? Uh, Teresiano. Yes, Pastor Sagi. <laughs> uh, I believe okay, the content age is just a number. Okay, it depends in what content we use it for. But in this case, since we're talking about marriage, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I believe... I believe that content, it's, it's out of content when it comes to marriage. Because um, somebody, a woman, since we are now all, some people are agreeing that, okay, one can be older than the other one, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. But now, when one says that age is just a number, and um, as we see the abominations that are happening, whereby a, a young boy, let me say a 15 or 20 year old boy, um, getting married to a 
a, a 40 year old woman in church mm. you see and then if we agree to say that age is just a number um i believe we end up uh, condoning such such abominations that are happening mm -hmm. amen so that is just my contribution on the there should at least be a certain gap you know mm -hmm. a certain gap when it comes to age and marriage because uh, yeah that's just my um, a teenager cannot okay let me say cannot but what we see a teenager getting married maybe to a uh, an old lady mm -hmm. or an old woman and then if we apply the content of saying that age is just a number mm -hmm. um it becomes un uh, you know unresolved or unrealistic mm -hmm. so you're saying age is not just a number correct yes please uh-huh all right uh who is it that had their hand up is that who was it that had their hand up amen, amen. Who's that? Who's that speaking? Who's that speaking? Praise the Lord. Yes, please, you may speak. Yes, please. Amen. Praise the Lord. For me, I think age is not just a number mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you cannot be a, for instance, say you're 27 years old, then you you are saying age is just a number and you get married to somebody who is 50 something years old. Age uh -huh. is not just a number. Yes. We must, there must be something be realistic to say that, uh, for instance, to say um, you, you can consider a certain age that for me, if I'm this age, I'm, I should just be married by a certain age group. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Uh -huh. So you're saying age is not just a number because we use it to plan our lives, eh? Correct? Uh -huh. uh, Pastor Delphine, is your hand up? Amen, blessed Bishop. Mm -hmm. uh, when we say that age is just a number, we also consider, since the, we have this, this conversation on godly character, mm -hmm. when we talk age is just a number, we also impl imply wisdom. Mm -hmm on the part of marriage also. Mm -hmm. So when you say age is just a number, you don't have just to go to an old person because age is just a number. Mm -hmm. You have to put wisdom. Mm -hmm. There are those people, you might find someone, maybe you are 27, then someone who is 30 years mm -hmm. or 32. Yes. You can refuse to marry him or her and that maybe that is the one the Lord has chosen for you. You want someone of your age. Mm -hmm. Or maybe this guy is 27. And due to your character, the way you live, the way you talk, mm -hmm. he see God in you. He see when I get this lady, he might move me near to the Lord. He must cause my life change. Mm -hmm. You cannot refuse to go to accept him that you are waiting for someone who is 30 like you, you see? But when you can also, at the other side, you cannot go to a person who is 60, as we, I started by saying earlier, and you are 32, but, and you're just saying that age is just a number. Mm -hmm. You look like you have married your father. No, <laughs> it's a matter of wisdom here mm -hmm. and godly character. It is the Lord who is initiating this marriage. So age is just a number and the wisdom mm -hmm. is, it has to be applied also. Mm. Thank you so much. Um, very powerful contributions there. Um, I hope uh, I'm not ignoring anybody that wants to contribute. Now, let me weigh in on these two uh, questions. The first one is, uh, what do, is it biblical? Is it unbiblical? Is it unbiblical for a man to be older than uh, than a woman? Uh, the answer is no. It's not unbiblical. Yeah, uh, we cannot state matter of factly and say that the Bible prohibits a man to be younger than the woman. We cannot say that because, in fact, what we see in the Bible, um, 
does not necessarily support that idea that the men must always be older than the women. Case in point, um, Moses' father, Moses father, his name was, um, um, his mother's name was Jacobeth, right? Uh -huh. Okay, uh, Sister uh, Eunice is asking a question. Uh, if it was bad for a mom and dad to have an age difference of 20. I'll, I'll get to that question. David, uh, not David, but uh, Moses, his mother, Jacobeth, married or was married by her nephew. So Moses' father married his aunt. Uh, now, the Bible does not tell us what, who was older, who was younger, but uh, by implication, by derivative, you could, you could imagine that it's, it, if Moses' father was his wife's uh, nephew, uh, then he must have been uh, younger than, uh, than her. Of course, um, the Bible did not say how old he was or how old the wife was, uh, but, it, the, but, but the Bible is, is clear that he married his auntie um, when they were over there in Egypt. Uh, and then you, when you go to the story of, of, uh, of David, uh, David was a very young boy, probably around uh, 17 years old or, or younger, most likely around 17 or younger, when he killed Goliath. And you find that um, when the king was, uh, wanted a man to kill Goliath, King um, uh, Saul, he promised that whoever was going to kill Saul was going to get his daughter Mirab. Was it Mirab? Yes, he was going to get Mirab uh, as a wife. And, and all the people that obviously were vying for that uh, position to marry the, the, the king's daughter were all soldiers who were seasoned um, in battle, who were men ready to settle down. And then all of a sudden you had this young boy who has not even been to war, David, uh, killing Goliath and then eventually getting this woman to be his wife. Uh, and, and so it is highly likely that Mirab must have been older than David. And as a matter of fact, uh, even though he did not end up marrying Mirab, but ended up marrying Michal, uh, but these were people these are women that, uh, that were older than David, and he was promised to marry them. So, biblically speaking, you find that there are men who married women that were older than them. And there is no suggestion in the scripture that that was unbiblical. Um, yes, men was created first, then women. But uh, as, um, who was that? Was that um, this uh, uh, Pastor Delphine, who said, yes, that was in the spiritual state. Uh, indeed, that was in the spiritual state. And, as, uh, uh, and in that spiritual state, they were glorified and not fallen as, as, uh, as, we, as we ourselves are now. And so, and indeed, spiritual maturity cannot be determined by age. That is where now the problem is that just because somebody has an, is older in age does not mean they are even ready for marriage, Spiritual, uh, spiritually speaking, preparatory-wise. Prepar uh, um, just because somebody is 30 years old does not mean they are ready for marriage. Just because somebody is 40 years old does not mean they are ready for marriage. Yeah, that is just a reality that we have to, to deal with. That is and, and you find a 20-year-old who is more spiritually matured, more ready for marriage than somebody who is 30 years older uh, than him. So that is very, very true. And, and success in marriage, marital success is not determined by how, how older uh, your husband or your wife is. Now, that does not mean that age is just a number that must be ignored, uh, as Sister um, Delphi said. Does not mean that we should just 
um, be careless now and say, well, since, since age does not matter, then I can do whatever I want, marry whomever I want. No, you, we, we must indeed apply wisdom uh, when it comes to the person that we are seeking her in marriage. But in any case, when we, when we are talking about another age, should the person be older or younger? Let's talk about the practicality of it. Uh, it is not practical that as a man, you would know that the, the woman that you are going to uh, fall in love with, that you're going to be attracted to, to seek marriage, uh, to seek her hand in marriage, it is not practical that she's necessarily going to be older than you. You are not going to know whether this person is going to be older than you or not. And, 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 and it is not even very, it's not practical at all for a man to go out and say, I'm looking for a wife who is 35 years old and I'm 37 years old. It is just not practical. Yeah? There is no guarantee that you are going to fall in love with somebody who is younger than you as a man. Or that as a woman, you are going to love somebody that is necessarily older than you. And so we find ourselves, the person who is seeking your hand in marriage, sometimes may be one year older, one year younger. And so, and, and therefore, you, 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 you may find yourself, you love the person without knowing what is their age, what is their age difference from yours. And, and if you are looking for a person who fits in a particular age bracket, I think that is, a, that is going to be quite a, <laughs> an impractical, an impractical uh, situation for you to find yourself in, to wait for a man of a, of a certain age difference to come and ask for a hand in marriage. Um, yes, and, you're, and, you, and as my wife says, you're limiting God because now, what if the Lord brings a man that is one year younger than you and you are thinking, I must only marry somebody who is five years older than me. The same for the guys. Yeah? You never know who it is that the Lord will bring into your life. Uh, yes, uh, you may find somebody who is older. Yes, you may find somebody who is younger. Yes, you may find somebody who is the same age as you. Uh, but you, you can never tell. You can never tell whom you, who it is that the Lord has in store for you. Uh, and I think it's, it's just really not practical. It's not practical to say, Lord, uh, please, uh, I only want, I'm, I'm not going to, to, to look for a woman to marry here if they're all older than me, <laughs> or if they're all younger than me. It's, it's an impractical uh, standard to set. Um, and age is indeed is not just a number because we have the age limit for getting married that you cannot, uh, what, what is it? Uh, uh, by law, speaking by law, uh, you must be 18 years old or older for you to be able to, uh, to get married. And so age is not just a number. And also, if now somebody approaches you for marriage, age does become something that you have to consider. You have to consider. That's where now personal preference comes in. The Lord created us different, differently. And even though we can never tell which person is, is coming to ask for a hand in marriage, uh, the issue of age still is one, is one question that you have to answer for yourself. If a man comes, then you find out he's 30 years older than you, you have a choice to decide. Is this, is this somebody that I want to marry? Do I want to marry somebody 30 years older or should he be at least five years older? Of course, you have to make that, 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 um, uh, that decision, but you can never tell uh, you can never decide who must approach you. Uh, it was fascinating for me to find out that um, Isaac married his wife and she was 20 years old, 20 years younger than him. Was that Rebecca? Rebecca was 20 years younger than uh, Isaac. Something to think about. <laughs> Something to think about. All right. Um, is there anybody who is who, who, who doesn't have clarity on this matter? So I think it is not unbiblical for a woman to be older than the men. It is not unbiblical. But you can have your personal preference and say, yes, I want to marry somebody who's uh, older than me. Or no, I don't want to marry this person who's, older, who's younger than me. Uh, and you would not be sinning. It would not be a sin to reject somebody who's older or younger. 
but it is not an unbiblical stand point of view. It is not, you cannot conclude and say that it is unbiblical, right? Uh, and so, Sister Eunice, you said your, your parents who had 20 years old difference. So that is not bad. <laughs> now, given the example of I, Isaac who married his wife who was 20 years younger than him, that is not bad. But now I, I must say this, that uh, the issue of spiritual, I mean, the issue of maturity, age-wise and maturity, uh, yes, you find some women, um, they are frustrated with their husbands because the husband seems to be childish because he's younger than her. That has happened. But I don't think we can blame the, the age at that point. We can, what we blame is the issue of lack of preparedness. Yeah? If a woman is married to a younger man, husband who is acting childish in their marriage who does not love the wife as he should who's not providing as he should who's not reasonable as he should be then the problem is not the age the problem is his preparedness uh, which is why we, we, we spent quite a lot of time uh, in the past few months discussing the issue of preparedness for marriage and anybody of us can have a successful marriage as long as you are prepared, whether you are older than your wife or you are younger than your wife. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Eunice says, I think as long as God brings a person uh, that is older than you, it makes sense to you then, and it makes sense to you, it's well to go ahead. Not minding what other people say. Yes, we have discussed many times about the importance of seeking spiritual guidance, spiritual leadership from our parents, from our, from our pastors, from our bishops. Indeed, we are going to, to, to listen to, 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 our, to our spiritual authority, and also you're going to pray. You're going to pray to decide uh, whether uh, the person, this man that is younger than you, is the one that you should marry or not. Amen. So we are not just going to take the age and say, oh, this person is two years younger. Okay, I don't want you. I think that would be a serious mistake to make your decisions like that. But, oh, he's two, he's two years older than me. I will take him. So to make your, your final decision based on age is not wise. Uh, so you have to consider all things. All right. Is, um, is everything all right? And so maturity. So then that brings in the question of maturity, that maturity indeed uh, is not determined by age. Maturity is not determined by age. You can take that to the bank. Yeah, you can take her to the bank. And uh, age difference, a man young, uh, younger than the woman is not what determines marriage breakdown. A man being younger than, than the woman does not determine marriage breakdown. A man being older than the woman does not determine mar mar marital success. Again, comes back to, as uh, Pastor Delphine said, spiritual maturity, the character of Christ that is formed in you, which has nothing to do with how old you are. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Has anybody? Uh, Amen. Is, is everything clear to everybody? Is it clear? Amen. All right. Is it okay to make decisions out of life experiences? Uh, life experiences shape our expectations. Yeah. And each one of us have unique journeys. Um, uh, although life experience does not determine marital success, uh, it, 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 it becomes a necessary part of your decision-making process. Yes, we learn a lot from our, from, our, from our life experiences. We do learn a lot. And nobody can take that away from you. All right. Uh, preparedness, preparing for marriage the right way, building the right foundation. Uh, can somebody read the book of Matthew, chapter 7? Our time is running out. We have 30 minutes. Uh, can somebody read Matthew, chapter 7? Or is it Luke, chapter 7? We're now talking about building the right foundation. Building the right foundation. 
Um, can everybody hear me? Man, Sorry? Which verse of Matthew chapter 7? Verse 24 to verse 29. Uh, 7, 24, 29. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Okay, so, okay, okay. Uh, um, the Bible says... Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the sun rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority, and not as the teachers of law. Amen. Thank you so much. In our preparation for marriage, we have to realize that we must... <laughs> In our preparation for marriage, we have to be purposeful. We need to have a purpose and a goal. Amen? And we say it, the goal for marriage is the image of God, Christ-likeness. The goal of marriage is to glorify God, to exalt the holiness of the Lord, to bring glory to the name of the Lord, that God be glorified in our lives, in our marriages through holiness and righteousness and righteous living. Yeah? And so we need to have the right goal. We need to have the right perspective. We need to have the right objectives. Why are we getting married? And then chart our lives towards that goal. And along with that, we need to have the right foundation. We need to build our marriages on the right foundation. We need to Prepare ourselves well. In fact, how you prepare before marriage forms the foundation on which your marriage is going to stand. The foundation that you must build for your marriage does not begin. You don't begin to build that foundation on the, on the wedding day. You don't begin on the wedding day. In fact, you don't begin when you are in courtship. You begin while you are still single while you are still a single woman, a single man. For example, how do you expect to be a prayerful woman when you get married if you are not prayerful when you are single? Yeah? You think this man will somehow turn, in, turn you into a prayer warrior? How do you expect to be uh, a, faithful, a faithful man in your marriage if you are not faithful while you are a single man? How do you expect to be a man of integrity when you are a married man? If you are not a man of integrity when you are a single man? Some of us think that once you get married, then everything all of a sudden magically changes so that now everything falls into place. That is a serious misunderstanding. You think only when I, found, when I finally find my wife, then... Then, then, I must be, then I can begin the foundation now of my marriage. Uh, you are seriously mistaken. The foundation, building the foundation begins now, while you are still single, while you are still praying and waiting for the Lord uh, to, bring, to bring you to the right person that he wants you to marry. Amen? So that is a very important thing to understand. Because you find even in the church, that uh, a single person is planning to get married, but they are not even investing. They are not even investing in their, in, in, in their marital preparation. They think marriage preparation, marriage preparation begins 
Once now they are in courtship, once now they are in a relationship and they are busy talking to pastor, oh pastor, I found sister X, Y, Z. Or oh, pastor, brother so-and-so has, has, has approached me. Then they think that's now when they, be, they should begin to uh, prepare. That's now when they should begin to have things in order. I think that will be a little bit late. That will be quite late. So the right time to begin to begin to build the right foundation is when you are in court. I mean, not in courtship, sorry, excuse me. Is when you are still single, right? Therefore, the question then is, what is the right foundation? What is the right foundation that I must build for my marriage, for my future marriage? Can we weigh in on this? What is the right foundation? What is the right foundation for your future marriage? What is the right foundation for marriage? Okay. Yes, for your future marriage, same question. Anybody to weigh in? What is the right foundation on which to build your marriage? On which to build marriage? What do you guys think? What is the right That's foundation? A Sorry? It's quite Special difficult. Maturity. <laughs> okay, it's quite difficult, huh? Spiritual <laughs> Did you say spiritual maturity? Yes. Uh-huh. Next. Yes, please. Spiritual maturity, what else? Um, you may write. It must be biblical. <laughs> Sorry? Can, can, can you please say that again? See, it must also be biblically rooted. Uh, uh, are you saying the word of God? Yes. The word of God? Mm -hmm. Right foundation, building the foundation of the word of God. Very important. The word of God is very, very important. This is, this is what makes sure that being, being of the same, uh, uh, in the book of Corinthians, it says that we should not be unequally yoked, isn't it? Yeah. Unequal yoking begins with differences in uh, doctrine. Yeah. Remember, idolatry begins with, always be, begins with apostasy. Therefore, by making sure that you are one in the word, or that your, your marriage is built on the right, on the word of God, it does on the word of God that you and your spouse are both anchored on the word of God, same word of God, same teaching, same doctrine. This is very, very important. Very, very important. Because um, when you are not agreeing in word, when it comes to the word of God, you're going to have some serious battles. Some serious challenges. Uh-huh. Foundation of <clears throat> the word. Foundation of spiritual maturity, foundation of honor and respect, respect, uh -huh. respect, foundation of Christ, Christ must be the center, Christ Jesus, uh -huh. the unconditional love of God. Why is it important that we have the right foundation? Why is it important that we have the right foundation? Why is it important that we build on the right foundation? Um, um, in the, in the uh, kindly just scroll up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the right foundation, uh, you also, I think, can we also talk about spiritual brokenness? 
mm-hmm. whereby we had several categories. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Prayer. We can add prayer here. Prayer for life. Um, a prayer for life determines successful marriage. Success in marriage. These are all things that determines success <coughs> in marriage, isn't it? Yes. A prayerless marriage. Marriage where there is no spiritual brokenness. I think we could add the willingness to learn. Willingness to learn, eh? Yeah. Thank you so much, Pastor Kathy. And humility, blessed senior bishop. If I, if yeah. I don't see Daisy there, there. Yes, we'll couple it here. So it is humility subservient to spiritual brokenness. Uh huh. A willingness to learn. That's it. Realizing that God is the author of marriage. You know, some people have quite weird understanding of marriage. But, uh, you know, there, there are so many people, even here in Namibia, they think if you find a man or a woman and they say they love you, they just start living together. They just cohabit. And then they call that marriage. That is not marriage. Yeah, it's not marriage to just find somebody and then you couple yourself to without. Uh, I've realized that too. Even in Kenya, I've noticed that people, when they're discussing marriage, they get it confused. They relate it to, you know, the man came and took me to his house and now, mm. you know, he's your husband. I'm like, how is he your husband? <laughs> there was no agreement. Yes. Before the Lord or before the courts. Yes. And then people you know they now begin to question themselves why things are not working out. Definitely. And things will never work out. They will never work out. They mm-hmm. will never work out. We had we had one gentleman very messed up. So he went to so he he started cohabiting. Now this one was a pastor. Started cohabiting with a woman and then uh he found another woman, then they got married by court. So now he has two women that uh, he's in a relationship with, with. One he's cohabiting with, and one is uh, in a relationship. That's wickedness. With. Yeah, very, much. very wicked. <laughs> very, very wicked. And he's so, a pastor. And he, he's a pastor. Okay. And when he's preaching there, you, you, your heart almost, you almost, you almost feel your heart is shaking when he starts. Then you like not be from the ministry of the Lord. It can't be. It cannot be. That's true. It cannot be. <laughs> so we must build on the right foundation, the right understanding of the of marriage, what marriage is before the Lord. Yeah. The treasure that marriage beholds before the Lord. And as understanding that uh, we building this marriage on the right foundation of spiritual maturity, the word of God. Yes, on the right relationship with God. These are the things that determine success in marriage. And when you look at people's marriages that have broken down, any marriage that is broken down, any marriage really, you always see that such marriages are built on the wrong foundation. It's like a no-brainer, but it's so it's such an important, such an important topic, but uh, not very complicated. Every marriage that is that you see broken out there, either the newly broken ones or the old broken ones, they all have faulty foundations. Whether they say, "Oh, in irreconcilable differences," whatever, whatever. Oh, we believe we need to grow in, in the next phase of our lives. We must, we cannot grow together. All lies. They have built on the ra- wrong foundation. Yes. Yes, having the right vision and mission. That's it. Now, the issue of interest, the only interests 
the issue of interest. Uh, not having the interest of Christ, yes, that is the wrong foundation. Uh, but any other interest apart from Christ is, is, does not really matter. Yeah. But if you're marrying somebody because they want to be millionaires like you, no, that, that, is, that does not determine success. In <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. The only interest that should matter is that this person is concerned about Christ. And that one, yes. But other interest of career and interest of uh, other things, those ones will not determine success. Yeah. But making sure that you are built on the word, that, when you're, that your marriage is surrounded around the word, you are both tapping on the word of God to grow, to enrich your marriage, to, to direct your marriage. Yes. Yes. There is success there. That one will succeed. make sure that you succeed. Ensuring that you, prayer has the right, rightful place in your lives, individually, and as a couple, and as a household. Yes, uh, you will see success there. Unconditional love, the love of Christ, John chapter 15. Yes, that will determine success in marriage. And, uh, and having things in common does not determine success in marriage. You can take that to the bank. Having things in common does not. The only thing that you should have in common is Christ Jesus. That one, yes, that one will determine success in your marriage. But other things, you must be a musician, you should be a doctor, you should be an IT engineer, or interest of, um, I don't know, you must be a philanthropist like me. Those things will not determine success in marriage. Never. Never, ever. You must, you must want three children like me, or uh, he must want children five years after we get married. Those things will not determine success in marriage. All right. And so we say, why is it that, why is it, why is it important? Yes, important. That we build on the right foundation. The maker says marriage works best when two people are connected individually to, the, to their God, walking with God obeying him through scripture and praying as individuals and as a couple. That's right. And it's especially important that you build the foundation of prayer while you are still single and the foundation of the word in your life while you are single. Because if you think your husband is going to make you more, love the word more, you, you may be seriously mistaken. Especially given the fact that there's a lot of clashing in the, in the first few years of marriage, um, you may end up hindering each other's spiritual growth if you're not careful. All right, but why is it important that we build on the right foundation? Let us weigh in on this one. Why is it important? Why is it important that we build on the right foundation? How does building on the right foundation help us? Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. Why is it important that we build on the right foundation? Yes. Okay. My first point I'll say it molds your marriage mm. to be strong and everlasting. Mm. When you are prayerful, mm. that marriage it will last. Mm. And it will also you not have a lot of quarrels, everything, mm -hmm. because the character in you, which is Christ-like, mm -hmm. it will always give you the qualities how to deal with ma that marriage. For instance, when you take the uh, great foundation and the, you put on the holy, the character of Christ, I'm trying to based on the book of Isaiah 66, one to two, things like contriteness, humbleness, mm -hmm. You look at things like purity. So when there is difference and you remember such kind of qualities in you, however, the other partner is the one who is wrong. You will always humble and calm down. Yes. And in that situation, you'll solve the situation in an easy way that even to the point, even the children may not understand there was a quarrel in this house. Mm, yes. Number two, it also gives you free, freedom 
Mm. Not not really freedom, but it's free yourself. Mm. For instance, maybe your husband is working somewhere mm. and you are working in another city. You are working in two different cities. He only come over the weekends or mm. depending. Yes. You will not have that issue of trembling now. Maybe my husband is moving with another wife. Maybe he's doing like this. Like mm. yeah. Yes. It, mm. it makes you strong, you, you know. You say like, mm. our marriage is built on the foundation of Christ. Yes. And my husband or my wife is a fearing woman, is a fearing husband. Mm. If he mess up with the life, he or she must know he's not messing up with me, but he's mm. messing up with Christ. Yes. So it brings that fear of God in your life, yes. both of you. Amen. And also another thing is it gives you to be that responsible woman or respons responsible husband. Yes. Knowing this person of marriage is a God-given person. Mm -hmm. And the way I have to take care of him or her is the way the Lord has initiated it. So anything I go against or breach it, I'm doing it against the Lord. Mm -hmm. Number three, it brings a happy family mm -hmm. where everybody will have, despite the fact of the challenges, you will not see your shortcoming. Yes. But the, anything you will be seeing there, despite of all, you always see Jesus exalted in everything. Mm -hmm. It gives you also... Uh, positive perspective because the life now this the life we are living is you cannot determine it mostly in this era of corona one can go to work tomorrow then he received the resignation letter or he received he's being told your work has ended today so when he comes back at home and your foundation is that good mm. you as the wife or the husband you are at that place to encourage the person yes. and mm. tell him Yes, it has ended, but that is not the end of the journey. There is something good the Lord has prepared for us. So you find mm. maybe he, this person, when he was terminated from work, he was very low. How will my family live? How will this be? Then he comes home and he found a welcoming wife, a welcoming mm. husband. Yes. And he gives him hope beyond what he expected. And by so doing, then you find the Lord now come in powerful and provide for you in a better way than even the work you love. Amen. So good foundation in marriage is very, very important. Indeed. Thank you so much. Amen. Very, very, very important. Uh, Monica says, uh, the right foundation helps the marriage to be stable so that it cannot easily be shaken by outside, outside things and challenges. That's it. Ensures stability. It ensures stability. If if there is one thing that sums our Christian lives, that 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 is our portion as Christians, not just as Christians, but as inhabitants of the earth, it's the challenges that we face. Yeah, the Bible promised that as Christians we must face persecution. We must enter the kingdom of God through much suffering. That is the promise. Uh, and then when you go to the book of First Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 28. Uh, now, the apostle here says, we must remember that we, for those, when, once we marry, when we marry, if you marry, those of us who marry will face many troubles. We'll face many troubles. Not a few, not some, but many. That's where now the, 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 the importance of the right foundation be, be, begins to be proved now. Because as we, if we, once we go back to our scripture that we read of Matthew 27, the Lord describes two Christians. You could say he describes two families. You could say he's describing um, two believers. One who builds his life on the right foundation, one who builds his life on the wrong foundation. Problems are always guaranteed to come. Challenges are guaranteed to come. Persecution is guaranteed to come. Things are not always going to be smooth. Things must not always be smooth. Because 
Indeed, that's how our character is formed. If you go to Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, if I'm not mistaken. Romans chapter 5 from verse 3, it says, Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So this is the process of building character and building Christ-likeness in our lives, in our marriages, in our relationships, in our spiritual lives. Yeah, That we must go through suffering in order that the right character may be built up in us. But if you don't have the right foundation, either for your spiritual life or for your marriage, you don't have the right spiritual foundation, then when suffering comes, when you don't have the right foundation for your marriage, when challenges come, and the challenges must come, the challenges will come, if you don't have the right foundation, you will not be able to stand. You cannot stand. You will not stand. And that character of Christ, that Christ-likeness will not be formed in you. Foundation is your stability. So when the challenges come, they come, Jesus describes here in Matthew chapter 7, that they will come and they will beat against the house. They will beat against your spiritual life. Your marriage is going to face unprecedented challenges. You know, there are so many challenges that come. Death in the family is going to come. One way or another. Financial challenges. Not that we pray for these things, but they, they, these things will come to test our character, to test our faith, to build our inner selves, yeah? to mold us, to shape us into the image of Christ. Death, sickness, um, loss of one sort or another, people rejecting you, people rejecting you even when you do not do anything. And so many things, uh, children, problems with children, and, and, and so many storms that will come um, to test your faith, to build your character in your house, in your marriage. And so if you are not built on the right foundation, when these things come, you will not be able to persevere. So building on the right foundation allows us to persevere. If you do not persevere, you will fall. You will fall even before the storm is over. You will not be able to make it through to the end of the storm. I think it's Proverbs chapter 7, which say, or chapter 10, verse 7, which says, if you fall in the day of testing, okay, I forgot where that scripture is. If you fall in the day of testing, your strength is small. So building on the right foundation ensures stability and strength for your marriage. Allows you to overcome a lot of things that, that Satan is going to throw you away. Uh -huh. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 15. Mr. Meke has posted 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 15. Yes. By the grace of God, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it, but each one should build with care. Indeed, we have to build with care. We must Put a lot of, we have to invest a lot in building the right foundation. We have to invest a lot because the success of your marriage, this is where it is made. How deep the foundation is, how deep your knowledge of the word of God is, how deep your prayer life is, determines how much are you going to overcome? How much success you're going to have in your marriage? Amen. It ensures longevity long-lastingness, because in that longevity is determined by how much can you persevere? Yeah? How much can you put up with the pressure that is coming? How much can you put up with the challenges that are coming? That is what determines the longevity, the, 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 the length thereof. Yeah? Uh, the, yes, the right foundation allows you to have the right perspective, the right focus. Uh, and uh, as Pastor uh, 
the offense set allows you to have to 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 to, to be protected from insecurities. It is the insecurities that lead to unnecessary fighting and conflicts in our marriages. Unnecessary fighting, unnecessary conflicts, insecurity. As you said, uh, the husband is working in a distant land uh, or has been gone just for a few weeks. And if a woman feels insecure, there will be no peace. If a man feels insecure with his, with his wife, there will be no peace in that marriage. There will be suspecting. There will be animosity and resentment and suspect of, of, uh, of cheating, of, in, of being involved with other spouses when there is no such thing. And so having the right sure foundation keeps away all these insecurities, allows you as a spouse, as a spouse, as a couple, to be of one purpose and of one goal. To be united in purpose. We have some people that are joining us now. Welcome, Pastor Johanna Matila. And thank you, Sharon. Welcome, Sister Martha Shiweda. You're welcome. We are discussing the building the right foundation for our marriages. The right foundation brings God's favor and godly offsprings. That's right. Uh, somebody raised their hand. Sister Sharon. Sister Sharon, you raised your hand. Okay. Uh, Pastor Delphine, your hand is up. One thing I realized uh, before, before uh, my wife and I got married, I quickly realized that we needed to build on the right foundation. Uh, I had to invest quite a lot. Uh, part of that investment means time. Building the right foundation requires quite a lot of investment. It's not something that just happens by chance. Invest time and you invest resources. You invest a lot of resources into ensuring that the foundation of your marriage is strong. If it means changing your career for the sake of your marriage, then you are going to do it. You see, the right foundation gives you stability, and it does not matter whether you change career or you give up your job at all. Yeah? You are still going to be stable and your marriage is still going, it's not going to be shaken. It's not going to be threatened by you giving up your job. In fact, you must be ready to prioritize your job. I mean, your, your marriage, you must be ready to prioritize your marriage over your job, over your career, over your work, if need be. Amen. That is one big lesson that I had to learn. Uh, I think that is one of the most important lessons I learned before I got, I, I got married. To be ready and willing to give up my job for the sake of my marriage. That is one very, very important lesson. And I think each one of us here should have that at the front of our minds. That if it, if it ever comes to a, a point in time where I would have to choose between um, being with my family or choosing the job over the family, then choosing your family over the job should be a very, very easy thing to do. Amen. Uh, anybody with a question as we wind down our session for today? Anybody with a question or contribution as we wind down? Building on the right foundation.
Anybody with a question? Another person has just joined us. All right, no question? All right, let me just uh, recap uh, on okay. what we have. Who's that? Who's that? Praise the Lord, the blessed bishop, senior bishop. Amen. Yes, I, have a, I had a question. Yes. Um, earlier we spoke about, we spoke about, um, you know, when, when, two, when two are willing to get married, uh, because since this session is not only it, it, it's also advice that I would like to to take from here yes. and also uh, pass on to uh, either family members, cousins, or there was a question that just popped up or rather thought of um, if we say that at least they, they both should be um, having the, 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 the same goal towards towards or a goal towards Christ, the fear of the Lord or a passion or a willingness, something like that was spoken. Um, um, so what was it? Oh, forgive me. Maybe something, you know, something to say that an interest, an interest uh -huh, for Christ. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, and then, is it how about if a person has an interest for Christ? They are not born again, but they have an interest for no. Christ. They, they say that. They, yes. they, they, they claim to say, yes, I know the Lord and I, I want to know him more. Mm. Um, and uh, I believe, or they might say, I believe um, the, the woman would draw him closer to Christ. You know, it's, it's what is happening right now it is in yes. the world today whereby uh -huh. the world is coming to look for spouses in the church. Yes. So how would one advise somebody like that? They, they, some, some people, they call that missionary courtship. Yeah. That uh, uh, I'm in a relationship with him because I believe he will become born again by the time, I don't know whether by the time they get married or by the time... <laughs> Yes, they think they can convert the other person, but that is that is a lie. Uh, converting, converting, converting someone to Christ is not our our duty. It is Christ's duty. So to think to think that we can use a relationship as a way of uh, of winning someone to Christ that is just self deception. Yeah, it's just yeah. entertaining the flesh. Yeah, <laughs> it's just entertaining the flesh. So only the flesh yeah. wins there. If the person who says they have willingness to to love Christ, why don't they jump in? That's why it. do they have this yeah. willingness? Yeah. That's it. People yeah. are chances. You know, <laughs> they try to see how much they can push mm -hmm. um, so that you can cave in. Yes. And I think that's what I think the people are saying is that um if you know your priorities, your foundation, then you're not just gonna allow any rogue, whatever person comes to just enter in, you know? Definitely. Definitely. And, and you know, the, the enemy is clever. Satan is clever. You know, these ideas can come from Satan. The Holy Spirit cannot give you such ideas that uh, you know, you see that, that, that girl from the club, if you get her, then she will definitely come. There is no guarantee that you being in a relationship with an unbeliever, that unbeliever is going to come to Christ. There is no guarantee. In fact, if you know the nature of relationships, the one thing that you do, you, you clash over your differences. And when you begin to clash over your differences, all these things about, oh, he also wanted Christ, is going to be out of the window. Yeah? When, 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 when such things begin to happen. And, and we, have, we have already heard stories here. Some of those people, they came to the church, they, they start singing in the choir, they pretend to be born again. And then after marriage, then the other face came out. The, the real them came out now. You know? I, was, I was told a very sad story here. 
somebody that I know, somebody that I know very, not too close, but uh, quite so. Um, Please share. Huh? Please share. <laughs> Very young people, very young people that were getting married, that got married. Um, they are both from the same church. Um, the young girl is, in, is, a, is, a, is a journalist. And the young man, I didn't know so much about him, but, but, but they were both, they both looked like they, they, they were really um, pursuing Christ. And I just heard recently that after they got married, this young girl who was uh, very, very well known by everybody in church, really, and uh, was very heavily involved in church, and he's having a very good job. As soon as they got married, the young girl started drinking alcohol and just indulging in uh, worldly things. And the guy was shocked. He was really shocked. He thought the woman he married was a woman of God because she used to do a lot of dramas in church. Yeah. Just to find out that the think, woman is very worldly. I think those kind of traits you can be able to pick up if you're very keen and if you seek the Lord, you know? Now, if somebody Even like that, that can be so challenging like that, how much worse trying to convert an unbeliever? Yes, please, you may continue. Not a chance. But I was just thinking, you know, in that kind of scenario, um, it's very easy to to gauge if somebody's um, open, you know, into that area. Because um, I realize there's some Christians who are not um, like, let's say, the other church. They are more willing to take a bit of alcohol. You know, they they put the the scripture where the Paul says a little bit of wine. Yeah is good um, for the stomach. Yeah. Um, so you, you, when you're talking to somebody, just, you know, you have to really pray to the Lord and even engage in a lot of questions um, yeah. just to see what person's limits are, mm -hmm. where their stand is on certain matters. Because I'm sure if he asked her, she'd be like, yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. You know, or something that could, you know, raise your alarm bells to say, okay, um, so is it something that you would do or you wouldn't mind to do? <laughs> in, 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 indeed, there are all those questions to ask, in the, especially in that period of courtship. Uh, or you have to ask all these questions. What are your views on alcohol? What are your views on, <laughs> on many things, even doctrinal questions? Yeah. Mm. Doctrinal questions. Yes, I... But I agree as well. That is very powerful. Mm. Oh, oh, sorry, Mr. Bishop, continue. No, I was just saying that an unbeliever, when you know that this is an unbeliever and you, you, you are now in love with this unbeliever and you want to, as a man, <laughs> you are now a man, you know that this person mm. is an unbeliever, you are trying to evangelize to this person and you think a relationship is going to bring them to Christ, a love relationship, no. <laughs> they can agree with you they will agree with you on many mm -hmm. things they will agree because they mm -hmm. want you they want to, to start mm -hmm. to have a relationship with you they will they will be willing to do anything <laughs> if you say let's go for prayers they will go to prayers if you say let us go to the conference they will go to the conference because they're trying to please you they're trying to please you and they do you know on one thing oh, sorry, no i was just saying that and they will put on the best behavior for you to believe that they are really interested Mm. I just wanted to preach in something. Yes. You know, one thing I've also realized, if, if now you go through TikTok, mm -hmm. um, you'd see some people saying that they are fasting, but then they're eating. You know, they make those jokes. <laughs> I've seen those jokes a lot, and I've been like, people are really accepting this. And they're like, oh, everybody has the limitations with the flesh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But... You know, somebody is like, they're talking to their girlfriend, like, okay, as a girl, you're talking to your girl. Mm -hmm. And maybe you had said you're fasting together. And one of them, they're like, oh, we have gone through past day three. And then the other person is eating burgers and chips, you know, while they're saying they're fasting. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So people are very cunning. <laughs> very. So as you said, you know, you'd, you know, if you want a person who's not a born again, they will do anything or they will say anything just to agree with you so that you may assume that we are walking the same way. But in reality, nobody knows the hidden motives of their hearts. Yes. Yes, and I agree. You know, it's it's like every all the answers are actually in the Bible. Having to think about it, when the Bible says, "I do not be equally yoked with an unbeliever," mm-hmm. and um, we because these are the, the clashes are going to appear, and when it says that to work out your own salvation in fear and in trembling, mm-hmm. uh. Because the devil is very corny, very, very corny. So he will use, obviously, if you are in Christ and the other person is not in Christ, who obviously the, the enemy will use the weaker vessel, you know, that is uh, more linked to you. Mm-hmm. Because for you to be involved in a, with another person, there is then a, a slight weakness within you towards this person. Definitely. So, and mm-hmm. the enemy uses our weaknesses, our weak points. Our weaknesses, yeah. our weak points. So yeah, so it's 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 oh red flags. Basically, once you see red flags, because uh, God, the Lord will not allow you to enter something that uh, you are going to to drift further away from. That He knows that here, my son, my daughter, if you enter this, you are going you are, you are, you are going to to drift further away from me. You see that. So here are the red flags that I present to you, but always he it's always always a free will. Yes. You decide to ignore the red flags, you enter. You yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. But if you dare to listen, if you can't hear clearly, you fast. <laughs> they will listen Amen. Louder. You see? Yes. So, yes. and then you say that, ah, ah, ah here, here, this, here, this danger. So then, then, you, then you withdraw. If you, if you come to me and say, Bishop, there's this unbelieving brother who wants to marry me, that's already a red flag for me. <laughs> That's already Even if he flag. gets born again next week. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I will ask, if you say, no, he's a new believer. When did he become born again? Oh, last week, I said, no. Red flag, mm. red flag. Big red flag. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you say, oh, he's an unbeliever, but he says he wants to receive Jesus. Lie, he's time, lying. Though. Those are lies. Over time, mm. they'll not change. No, they'll not change. Chameleon. They'll go us. You know those chameleons, they, they they change with the situation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, don't believe such lies. <laughs> Amen. Uh, note seven. Who's with the note seven wants to ask a question with a raised hand? Note seven has a raised hand. You may speak. I'm sorry, I uh, 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 I don't know your name. Who's this with the note seven that is raising their hand? Or oh, Sister Maker, you can go ahead while note seven is preparing. Just want to add on what, what, what people are discussing right now. Yes. I've realized that it's not really easy or to say, or you have eyes on people outside there, those that are not born again. Mm-hmm. I've, I had, had, I've had a story of a, a guy who pretend to be who came in the church and pretended to be born again and he got uh, he got a lady and when the day they got married just after after the after after the party the the guy was telling a lady that no more revival churches in this house that is very yeah. <laughs> out there yeah. that's not, the devil himself Yep. To say maybe uh, not to eye on people outside there to say no, I'll bring this one to Christ. Uh, maybe you will receive the Lord and you. But, but most of people that we are finding out there that are, many people are coming in the church pretending to they want to be born again, but they want ladies or men in the church, and after yes. a while they will change back to their, their wicked behavior. Oh yes. It's very oh. very 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 terrible, dreadful <laughs> to get people out there. Very, very... They can see him on fire and oh. they'll be praying, casting demons with you. But I'm telling you, oh. that day. <laughs> because they think uh, it's good to get a church girl. Church girls, then they they go their own ways afterwards. Yes. 
not yeah. even church girl, church boy, you know? Yes, it, listen, they are more obedient. Yes, we are in danger too, you know? <laughs> Very much. You know, and you know when you hear the men of God when they say um, there's people in the church who will miss um, because of the some of little things that they do. Yes. That, um, and then you wonder in this glorious ministry when the Lord is now talking about somebody in this ministry because of their traits, um, their character. Um, these things that they have not aligned, that they will miss. You know, it's shocking. Not, not alone even going out there. Obviously, out there, we're able to pick up the, the red flags. Yes. But somebody within the church, now obviously, this is the church. Mm -hmm. So somebody within the church that can camouflage to be yes. walking with Christ, I think that's the danger. That's why you really, like the way we have kind of continued to say that people really have to seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. You really have to decipher, really dig deep, you know, and ask the Lord to really expose, you know, any hidden agendas of the Lord. Because if it's somebody within the ministry, somebody can be raised to be a pastor. Somebody can be raised to be a bishop. But that is not a guarantee that that person is truly working with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it is really a matter of um, seeking the Lord's um, wisdom, understanding, really asking the fire of Elijah to fall <laughs> on you and help you to really decipher many things that, you know, you might not see with your naked eye. Indeed. We have to be spiritually alert. We have to be spiritually the devil, the devil is at the church. He has entered. He has mm. camouflaged and entered. Pastor Delphine, you yeah. want to say something? We totally agree with you all. I, I have seen this thing. Not only in the world, you go and get someone there who is ready. They come from outside. This thing is happening in this holy ministry of the Lord. The volume is very low. I'm saying this thing. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm A saying bit. it is true. These things are happening in this holy ministry of the Lord. Mm. Because I think we had a, I have a, myself, I'm talking with, from the perspective I've seen of a friend. They were my very close friends. And in fact, these are the people help me in salvation, you know, when I came to Saudi Arabia, I was not born again, and they were the people who are directing me how to lead a holy life in this ministry, but when they get married, the two of them, both of them were my friends, it's really shocking, when they get married, everybody gets to understand each other is a demon, not, and by, by so, but at this moment, they are not living together, they have already filed divorce. Wow. So you find when the, there's this character of Gideonites in the mm. church, when the Lord said, do not interact, now they come with, in, in presence. Like they have formed the way the character, Gideonites said, we have walked from afar, look our clothes, what are scattered. Yes. So <laughs> it forced Pretense. Caleb and Joshua to have mercy on them. And, and when they came, they only found, that they were just Gideonites from here. Mm. So these people that have entered in the church and they are the same character. And once you have entered with them, you have made that covenant of marriage. Mm. You can do nothing. They trap you. That's a trap. They trap you. Yes, and the shocking part of it. So I was. I, this is a question I'm asking, Blessed Bishop. Yes. What do you? On such a case, then you find someone filed divorce. As a bishop, how do you advise? Do you advise these guys to marry again? No, it's uh, you are finished <laughs> <laughs> because for me, for me, this friend of mine told me he has been, yes. Oh, your voice is uh, gone, sister. Uh, sister Evelyn. Okay, 
Well, she's coming back. Dennis? I think I had about one which said, um, there's people who in this glorious ministry got married and one month later filed for divorce. Right. And in my mind, I would think, okay, um, one month. <laughs> So it's just like, okay, obviously I don't know the background, but one month, was it even, did you even have courtship? Did you even? I think you, know, like, you can, I think you can uh -huh. tell some of the problems there. I think you can tell some of the problems. Uh -huh. It is a serious mistake. Like, of, <clears throat> like thinking uh -huh. that if you're in the uh -huh. ministry of the Lord, then everything will just be smooth. Oh. <laughs> and everything must just go well. If, if the man finds the woman, he will just push his way to get her. He doesn't need to, to follow pro proper procedure. He doesn't need to wait. He doesn't need to wait in order to build the right relationship with the woman. He just needs to tell her, I want to marry you. <laughs> I think that, that would be one of the problems. Yeah, he comes with a lot of confidence. Mm. There's no brokenness. He's so bold. He says he's Boldness, he thinks, well, I'm in the ministry of the Lord, you're in the ministry of the Lord, so we can just get married and everything will work out very well. That's a serious mm. misunderstanding. Very serious. Problem. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's other things. Maybe they found each other in the church after they met in the world. Because <laughs> it's so, because I think, you know, even I think I've observed like um, one of the weddings, you know, in the glorious ministry. The teaching that they are given yeah. while consuming their marriage. Yeah. You know, you're being given heavy words there. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. you've been told this is for life, and you're like, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this is until you enter. You cannot say, I'm married today, tomorrow, I'm out. Yeah. You know, I'm tired. I'm going, I'm going to get an, the one I wanted. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing. And you're told, are you sure you want to go ahead? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for somebody to come and say, um, after a month, like what have you even known about the person in a month? A month is nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> a month is like one is like just yesterday. Yeah. I, you know I was nothing about that person. <laughs> you know nothing. Like, I think for them, they were not even willing to learn or even willing to humble as people have you know the list that you have there people yeah. are not willing to be humble and say i was or agree to disagree on certain points mm -hmm. or just i don't know if, or maybe it's the independence of the women anything a man can do i think the women can do better <laughs> I, I don't know but i think for it to happen in a glorious ministry is really a huge red flag and people really have to, as you said, um, people might enter with this assumption that because I'm in the ministry of the Lord, everything is just going to work out. Mm. I don't have to uh, exert any effort on my part. The Lord is going to just work it out. That's a serious mistake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they were maybe going through already challenges in their courtship. And then when they saw that or maybe received the advice that no, they need to get married. So they thought maybe if they make things right before the Lord, they put the, the, the they get married, then all of a sudden you know, something magical is going to happen, or <laughs> then they are going to finally be uh, something uh, softer or smoother. But then they got married, and then they saw that challenges are still there. Uh, it's still them mm -hmm. against. Um, persecutions, and uh, mm. the baby so which are oh, uh, <laughs> forget it, just I'm funny. out. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, there is no substitute to following the proper procedure. You know, yeah. taking time, there is no substitute. There is no substitute for that at all. If you rush things, you are assured of crashing, of disaster ahead. It's just an assurance. And, um... and you know the fact that if you get married in the ministry on this holy ministry of the Lord, the real church, yeah. there is no divorce. You know, it's not like the people out there where yes. the Lord does not recognize um, 
maybe if you got married in court or the church, the Lord. What happened to Pastor Kathy? What happened to the voice? Are you still there? Because then if if you go out and you marry or fall into sexual morality, you are going to hell. Definitely. That truth has, has to be embedded in our hearts. It has to be well strengthened and rooted in our hearts. And well established in our hearts. That it is a lasting covenant. Mm. Dennis, Dennis Mutula, is it Dennis Mutula? Sorry, Dennis Musalia. Dennis Musalia. Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. Yeah, so my question is uh, so you see, Bishop, Senior Bishop, there is this situation where by maybe it is uh, the girl goes ahead to approach the bishop and says, uh, Bishop, would you be able to help me to reach brother so and so? I think mm-hmm. I can settle, <laughs> I can settle with that brother into marriage. And then the bishop goes, the bishop goes ahead and speaks to you, to, to the guy. And then the guy says, you know, I'm not financially stable and all that and all that. And then, and then there is that conversation there whereby you are told that uh, the, the, the lady says, I'm able to help you maybe to set up a business so that you get uh, financial st- stability. All I want is for us to go through the process so that you can get married. So what? what's your take? What's your take on that? Could it be one of the red flags? Hey. <laughs> yes, yeah, I think true. It, yes, I it think has it, happened. I think it, yes. there's a red flag there. Yes. I think there's a red flag there. Um, yeah. I think there's a red flag there. Why? Now, uh, I <clears throat> the man normally is the one who approaches the, man, the woman. To, I was thinking uh, the same. Yes. <laughs> ask for her hand in marriage. It sounds to me like this woman is desperate to get married and is rushing mm. and is not going to take a no for an answer. And that is a... <laughs> <laughs> and is not willing to wait. So those are already red flags. They're not willing to wait, no for an answer. The woman approaching the man. So those are... <clears throat> and she's like, I will set the business for you so you have no excuse. Yes. Hey. And then you have... Uh... <laughs> That's harsh. <laughs> That's very harsh. I'll set a business for you. You don't have to get worried. Just accept. Yeah, and also there, is, there's a lot of self-sufficiency there. The woman feels mm. like she's superwoman. No. That's a big mm. red flag. Yeah, that's a big red flag. So what if the business doesn't go well? What do you that's, do now? That's the thing. Now. <laughs> what if I'm not blessed? That the guy is not blessed with those business hands? You know, there are those people that uh, businesses go very well with them. What if this guy, yes. maybe he has in the heart, he has a, a different career path that he's desiring to follow. And then now you have mm-hmm. the, the possible clash of uh, of leadership in that house, in that house. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. she may end up being the, trying to take over the figurehead, the leadership, the headship of the house. It's whatever she says or the highway. Yeah. You can already tell potential conflicts there. Or the man feeling like he, he, he's a useless man because the woman is doing everything. <laughs> <laughs> those, are, those are potential problems already there. So those are huge red flags. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and it does not seem like the man is really, in, is really into it. Into, yeah. Not- it's like he's being forced into for, for, for some situation you know for some situation you might find that the, the the guy could be that broken person that say okay i desire to get married but my problem actually the problem here was i'm not financially stable but i'm willing to get married mm-hmm. but because you know my financial status has made me to be to, to shy away, to, 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 to not so much get into matters of the desire to get married. 
So that's the it was something why... that the girl and the man had spoken about. So she yeah. just approached the bishop, but she already had like a relationship. She was aware that the man was interested, but it's just because of money or a job. Is that right? Is that I right? think bishop. Uh -huh. I think bishop. Uh, the the this situation here, according to how I was listening, uh -huh. the the two were talking. They were really talking, and on that basic scale, like we are just friends. And the lady was showing signs to the guy, but then the guy was not asking her out mm. so that they can get married. Mm. So the lady decided, okay, let me go to the bishop. Let me be the one to go to the bishop so that the bishop can talk to this guy so that he can man up. But if thing. he's not manning up now, when will I? When will she want him to man yeah. up? If he he's can't make ready. such a decision. Yeah, he's not ready. That guy is not ready. That guy is not ready. <laughs> <laughs> Even not ready for marriage. Okay. So that is sure, not going to help. You. So that's just mm -hmm. it's it's just setting themselves on it's just setting herself on a course for disaster. Yeah, that man is not ready. And she wants to speed up everything. It won't work. Or they may get married and then then they will then the, the disillusionment. She'll be very disillusioned. She, she thinks things must just work out somehow. He must man up, he must learn to man up, and then he must somehow get ready, be ready to, in order to suit her desire to get married, I don't know, in two weeks or two. She'll get a rude awakening. Yeah, she'll be very much rudely awake, awakened. Because now if she's going ahead to try and make him to make a huge decision in his life, then you'll have to do that for everything he does. Definitely. So will you be going for interviews for him? She'll be frustrated. Because he's feeling like he's not capable of getting that job. So now you have to go with the interview and do a presentation for him and say he's capable of doing yeah. this job. You know, <laughs> like where is the where does it end? No, it will not. And they're eventually going to have a very big fight that is going to to disappoint her very much. Yeah. I think if you, as you said, if he was not able to approach the bishop himself and say, I want this lady, but I don't have a job. How can you help me? It is much better than the lady going to the bishop and saying, "Yeah, sure." I, I, I think this guy, we can go, but you know, he has no job. I'm willing to facilitate him. Um, <laughs> yeah, kind of a thing. Wow. Yeah, the man must He's take the old woman. Must take the leadership from the way to go. Yeah, maybe she's very. Uh -huh. I can I can imagine she's an older woman who's this desperate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that assumption. What if she's not? <laughs> well, I don't think. Okay, yeah, it is an assumption. It's true, but I think it's ninety percent correct. <laughs> uh huh. It's a sign of disparity. But it's in a bishop. Desperate. Yes. <laughs> Agree anyway. Yeah. Yeah, you disagree. Uh, yeah, if the lady feels that um she loves that guy, then it's well and good. Approaching and tell approaching the bishop and telling the bishop has no problem with that. There's no problem with that. It's just like uh, how men do approach bishops, you know. If the guy accepts, it's fine. If he doesn't, the lady can there for then uh, you know. Continue praying for the Lord to like. Look, you I think it's different. Yeah, it is different. <laughs> it's different if she goes and says, "Please pray for me for the Lord to bring somebody," but yeah. not to go pinpointing somebody and saying Same. that one. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, to say, "I want him to marry me," please talk to him and convince him. Yeah, that is. Uh... But it's just like it's just the same way men do go to bishops and say, "I want to marry you." That specific lady, just but the that's, same. That's not for the bishop to convince the lady. Yeah. <laughs> the bishop is not supposed to convince you and force you to marry somebody you don't want to, or you're not ready to marry. Yeah, and actually, even for the for the man that goes to the bishop and asks for mm. for and asks and, and speaks out that I want to get married to so and so, you actually must go and tell that person that this is what I want. Or lady, else, if you leave the bishop to go and convince the girl for you, then 
I don't think no. that sounds proper. No. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's it's only uh, sorry, Blessed uh, Sina Bishop. I believe it's even only gonna bring going to bring com- com- what conflict later if the woman comes to uh, the senior bishop and try to say bishops convince this man to end, uh, get married to her and then they get married. You know, later when the persecutions, because you know, those who are married, they get more, <clears throat> uh, they face through more challenges and persecutions. Mm-hmm. And when those persecutions come, uh, uh, that man is going to come back to bishop, say, bishop, you are the one that gave me this woman. You are the one that convinced me. <laughs> To, to marry this woman. What have you brought into my life, you see? So it, it all comes down to those. I believe if this, if a woman sees um, potential in a man or likes a man, the woman must just pray. Just pray, 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 or ask the bishop to pray with you mm. for that woman, uh, for, for that man, sorry. Uh, because when a, a woman approaches us, rather, this is now coming from a man perspective, <clears throat> oh, it's not proper. Us, we, yeah, it's not proper. We feel like we feel like something has been taken away from us, you know, as <laughs> from our our men as, as a man, you know. So yeah. it's it's not fair. We be, I believe it's not fair. Yes. And, uh, actually, for a, a response to such a request from a, a lady that is approaching you and asking your hand in marriage, and you are a man. The, the, the response is normally, once you just start hearing that conversation, the exact response that you manufacture in your heart, you are very ready to say no. Yes. So it, it doesn't, doesn't actually, it, it shows that that lady is somehow desperate or something. But um, how about senior bishop? How about if you put it in this perspective that you should just swallow your pride, like um, swallowing your pride and say what your heart really wants. So if so that even if the bishop or the guy, if they want to think you are desperate, let them just think. <laughs> but at least you shall have said it. <laughs> but where have? You know, the, I think that's the new thing, the new generation now that they say yeah. women to step up, <laughs> just shoot your shoot. That's the uh-huh. de- lies of the devil. Don't believe mm. them. <laughs> that, Actually, that shoot your me, shoot, Bishop, you just leave it to the world and let us wait on the Lord. And if yeah, the sure. man does not step up at at the initial stage, he will uh-huh. not he will fail in so many things after. So there's no point in wasting your time. Uh-huh. <laughs> Actually, for me, I would say it, it will be rather it will be rather better for the for the lady to go and tell the bishop, Bishop, please let us pray. Help me to pray over these matters, over these uh, matters of marriage, because I feel like I'm ready to settle in marriage, but I don't know the right person to settle into marriage with. Rather than pinpointing and launching your shot on so and so and that is the one that I want. What if that is not the will of the Lord? Come on, come on. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, Naomi says, uh, God wants the Israelites not to marry or get married to foreign community. When they did, we see that they were turned to worshipping idol gods. It's very clear that that company corrupts good morals. It doesn't... Mm, Say that good company will change a bad person. So it just calls for carefulness at all times. Susan says, may the Lord give us wisdom. That's where the fear of the Lord comes in. Fear of God comes in and we must be born again completely. Mm-hmm. Rushing things without investigating. Not good. And uh, <clears throat> uh, Day Adeline has a question. Uh, Esther Blessing says, nowadays, the men of nowadays are looking for ladies with money, even if they themselves have money. <laughs> yes, we have lazy, lazy men who are looking for women with money. It's true. That's why even the sister's church mm-hmm. must be careful. There was this man, he sent a pastor to go ask for a hand in marriage of a lady that he wanted. When the pastor went there, he was rejected and hatred broke out between the pastor and the man. 
he was thinking the pastor did not deliver the message properly. <laughs> for such a man, <laughs> for such a man as that one that breaks out into into hatred with the pastor, it means it shows clearly that that man number one was not born yeah. again. Yeah, he was not prayerful. He's an insecure man. The word. Mm-hmm. He's a very insecure man. He's sending the pastor. pastor yeah, and he's he's very, very proud. Yeah, very <laughs> proud and insecure. Yeah. Uh huh. All right. We ladies too should not deny that we we ever admire the men somewhere. Indeed, um, you can never control. Uh, you are falling in love with one particular person or another. Even women do fall in love with men. Yes, we understand that. Uh, but then there are principles that have to be followed. Uh, and men, you cannot just send your pastor to go and talk for you. And a woman to be taking the Eunice, leadership. maybe you can mute. <laughs> who's that? Who's, who's Eunice? There's oh, like... Uh... <laughs> Sorry, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> we are saying that uh, there was voice coming from your A background noise. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, I, would, I would love us to continue, but our time has run out. Let me just answer Amen. the question of uh, Pastor Delphine. She was asking about these people that got married and then they divorced. Is it one month later? And she was asking, do you advise such a person to remarry? No. No. The Bible is very clear. We just have to stick to Scripture which is why it is important to ensure that we don't rush into marriage. And when somebody <laughs> rushes into marriage, then you find out that things are not what they seem to be. Then I have a question. You just have to, to humble yourself and wait on the Lord. The Lord says, either you or your husband dies. So no Senior Bishop, I have a question. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um... Um, in this ministry, we know that there is no divorce. Divorce is not allowed. And uh, 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 I think uh, there are situations where you find that after marriage, and uh, there are couples who divorce and remarry again. Um, what do you think? Uh, what do you think could be the cause of the you know uh, the priesthood allowing allowing them uh, allowing that particular person? To again after what? divorce, if they got married outside of this ministry, if no, it was no, marriage by court, it's inside, inside, and the remarrying again takes place inside. Uh-huh. I, I don't no. know. No, I will, I will have to say, I don't know. <laughs> that is, uh, when, when we marry people here, we say no divorce, and that is it. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe you should inquire because maybe they yeah. were in like when they joined the ministry they were married but they were not married in the right way. She's saying they got married here. Like you know, they like, get married here. An example we married here. And they divorced here. I get married and uh, of course a, a wedding has to take place, mm-hmm. and then I divorce and then I I I like you know I get married for the, another second time. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, they, in that case, I really don't know. And uh, that, that bishop or that pastor must explain himself why he's allowing such things. Uh, now, let me answer this. Marriage. Yeah, let me answer this one. This one is a powerful one. Here's another red flag. A friend of mine, this is from Gray Adeline. A friend of mine was seeing a brother when they were getting to know each other. He said he has one child. Then later he has three children. Those are already four red flags. <laughs> or is it three red, red flags? Red, 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 red. Red everywhere. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's she, already starting off with lies. It is. Then, it is, then the yeah. foundation becomes yeah. lies. Yeah. Faulty. Very faulty. Deception. So it is good that your friend ran. It's good that she left. Because... Uh, there's three women. And what is the youngest child? How old is the youngest child? How old is the youngest child in that instance? One month? Nine months. Nine months. <laughs> five. Five years? Or she five says five, uh, five what? Five months. Five months. Hey. 
Five years. That's, that's very serious. <laughs> Five years. Okay. Five years. That is the youngest one. But my question is, why is it just impregnating people and now wants to marry this one that doesn't have a child? Yeah, let, if, he's, if he's born again, and those ones he impregnated in the church, let him go back there. He should go back there and go back there and and be responsible enough. Be responsible enough. <laughs> but if those but women they don't, want him, they don't want him, then and, and he then says, Where's the echo coming from? echo coming from? I wonder. Maybe it's coming from. I think it's coming from Lambala, Meki. Meki has closed the mic. Uh -huh. so, so, number one, so the man has children. And the lady decided she does not want. She has every right to do that because those are big red flags. You can see pot potential problems already there uh, with even the financial aspect. Hmm? He's now going to have to, to, to be supporting four families. And there's going to be a, a huge Is financial, he a financial conflict of interest there. And uh, the, the Bible advises or the Bible advises that if a man impregnates a woman, yeah, it will be responsible for him to seek for this woman's hand in marriage. How can you just go around mm. impregnating people and then now you want to marry somebody else? That is not right. No. Yeah, that is not wise at oh, all. So I would want to know, mm. is this man really born again or is he not? Yeah. Uh, so this woman did well. I can uh, all I can say is this woman did well. She ran for her life. <laughs> <laughs> ran as fast as you can. Yes, and that is very good. Yeah, he, that means <clears throat> uh, he has to try again to be, to be. I think on matters of. I think Bishop. On matters of the, the man being born again, maybe that humanizing that he, that he was doing, maybe it was before he got uh, born again. And then when he gets born again and he cannot, uh, he, cannot, uh, he cannot access, he cannot access a relationship with, the, with either of the women that he impregnated. And now because he's born again, he wants to do it right. That's why he, he's approaching the lady and is asking for the lady's hand in marriage, and then the lady runs away. But then he remains stranded because the other relationships they well, ended, but they ended with with a child. Well, so, that's possible, but mm -hmm. uh, he, he he's releasing drip drip information here. First, he says he has one child. Then later, he says there are three children. Then you hear uh -huh. six. No thanks. Yeah, next time you hear six. No, there's a big problem there. Maybe he's not born again properly. Are they mm -hmm. allowed to invite members? Uh, someone crosses over. Are they allow you to invite members. Uh, okay, I don't, I'm not sure I understand, Sister Eunice. We are ending. This is now the last one, the very last one. Eh? My time is over. <laughs> If if, uh, <laughs> if 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 I don't if I don't if we if if our lockdown in Namibia continues, uh, especially here in Windhoek, if it continues, then we will have another session next Saturday. Actually, that one is even that question is just directed to you. Okay, you can write to me on WhatsApp. In your WhatsApp. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Now, uh, I hope uh, those discussions were helpful to somebody. Um, please stay away from missionary courtship. I think that's the message that comes out. Look for those red flags. You hear somebody uh, is, is not, you, you, you are entering a relationship, you don't know if somebody has a child. If they have a child, let it be clear from the word go. Not these things of are hiding information and then later on. So we have already discussed this matter of children. Um, there's nothing wrong to marry somebody with a child, 
but things must be done properly. No lies and hidden things. So, and uh, we talked about making sure we build the right foundation. Let us invest in building the right foundation. And that investment begins now. And so that means you must be diligent in everything that you do. Amen. So I'm going to ask Pastor Kathy to pray for us uh, as we end our session. Uh, before that, before that, uh, Esther Blessing, what was that question that you asked? Um, divorce is not only if one falls into sexual sin. Can you get married again? Okay, this is a big question. It's better, please write it on the group so that we discuss it in our next meeting, okay? Esther Blessing. Please rewrite that message for our next fellowship. It's a big question to answer. Okay, Pastor Kathy, can you please pray for us? Amen. All right, uh, mighty everlasting Father, we want to thank you, Jehovah, for this wonderful opportunity to be able to fellowship with you, mighty Father. We pray Lord, that you may help us open up our spiritual eyes Speak your ears that we may receive from you your, your leading and your guidance, everlasting Father, in how we may walk in purity, in holiness and in righteousness before you, that we may not be led by the devils of the enemy, we may not fall under his traps. This one show up is to in um, holy matrimony, holy marriages before you. And we pray, everlasting Father, that you may continue to help that may enlighten us and open to us all your ways, mighty Father. And um, everlasting Father, we thank you. We bless you, mighty King, bless you and righteous in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. In the for and the love of. Amen. Uh, amen. Amen. We've amen. Been We've been missing. Amen. 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 We've been missing some of the prayers, but amen. 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 Thank you so the much. The network went. Yeah, it was cutting. Oh dear. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um. Uh, again, uh, we may have our next meeting this coming Saturday if the lockdown in Namibia continues. Praise the Lord, Senior Bishop. Amen. Kindly, I was requesting about the, the time because normally on Saturdays we have we have the, the Friday vigil, the, the all night service, and sometimes it ends late. Yes. And so, um, we some of us we go to sleep and you know. We kind of wake up late, so I don't know if we can adjust the time a bit. Yes, please. Because yeah, normally the service you. goes really till late. Amen. One Thank hour you. late. Okay, I'll push it for an hour. Yes, uh, two hours, an hour. Not can you push it for two hours? Like okay. <laughs> okay. We shall we shall also discuss on the group. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <coughs> All right, thank you. Everybody. Yes, please. That's also my request. All right. Um, <laughs> request well thank taken. You so thank you so much, Askofu. The request is well taken, please. And we shall discuss it. Amen. Thank you so much. There's no lockdown here. <laughs> yes, the Lord bless you all. <laughs> the Lord bless you all. <laughs> Thank you so much, Senior Bishop. Um,